Hi, I'm Ellis with Level Up RN. In this video, I'll be demonstrating how to palpate a pulse using a radial pulse and how to auscultate a pulse using the apical pulse. I'll be following the steps that we've included in our clinical nursing skills deck. So if you have this deck, grab this card and you can follow along with me. If you don't have the deck and you're interested in checking them out, then you can head on over to leveluprn.com. When preparing to take a pulse, you need to make sure that you have access to a clock with a second hand. So when you're selecting your watch, we do usually recommend that you find one with a sweeping second hand. And that means that the second hand is smoothly moving. The alternative is the ticking second hand, which means it goes tick, tick, tick. The problem with that is when I'm listening to or feeling for a pulse, and I'm watching that tick, sometimes I accidentally start counting the ticks instead of the pulse, and it will throw off my count, and I'm not going to get an accurate pulse rate. So utilizing a second, or sweeping second hand, can help prevent that error from happening. I also usually recommend to my students, especially as we're learning how to do pulses, that it's okay to maybe nod your head along with it, so that you can feel the, the rhythm and the beat while you're trying to learn how to double task, right? And, and feel and listen and count all at the same time. I also usually suggest maybe not staring at the clock, right? So you'll note when it started and then sometimes I'll just look away into the distance as I'm counting. Because again, if I'm watching that second hand move and I'm seeing numbers or, or feeling the beat of the second hand, I'll start miscounting. I'll start counting the clock instead of counting my patient's actual pulse. So staring off and like every so often looking back at the clock can help you maybe stay on track with the pulse itself. I'm gonna start by taking my patient's pulse radially. So I'm going to find his radial pulse on his wrist right here. It's gonna be proximal to the thumb so you can sometimes just follow the thumb down and there's usually that bone that she can find as well. So I'm going to place two or three of my finger pads onto his radial pulse. I need to press firmly enough that I can feel the bounce, but if I press too hard, I'm actually going to occlude it. So this can take some getting used to, and you definitely wanna try on different types of people so you can feel different types of pulses. So as I'm pressing down, I'm assessing a couple of different things. I need to know the rate, so how fast is it going? I need to know the strength, so plus one to plus four of, of the force that it's showing. I need to know whether or not it's equal. So is this radial pulse in his right arm the same as this radial pulse in his left arm? So I do wanna quickly just touch them both at the same time, but I don't need to actually count his pulse on both at the same time. But when I'm ready, I'm gonna go ahead and place my two fingers on his radial pulse. Three fingers is also fine, I just prefer two. I'm going to use my watch and I'm going to count for 30 seconds. So let's do that together. All right, so I got 32, which means when I multiply that by two to get the 60 seconds or one minute's worth, I have 64. So my patient's pulse is 64 beats per minute. I can only do that if the pulse is regular, meaning the beat is consistent and it always comes at the same time. If their pulse is really irregular, I can't take it for 30 seconds and multiply it by two. I would need to really listen or feel for that full minute. So let's listen to his apical pulse. So I'm gonna pull your gown down, sir, and I'm gonna place my stethoscope over his apical pulse, which is that fifth intercostal space in the left midclavicular line. And we're going to listen to his apical pulse together for 30 seconds and see what we think. And begin.
So that time I actually got 46. And so I would multiply that again by two and I would know that that is their beats per minute. We're gonna do this twice more, just so that you can get the practice and the feel of listening to a beat. I find that some students, you know, have to kind of move with it to really get it. Um, I think especially when we're listening to an apical pulse, it can be very distracting, right? It's moving, he's potentially moving, I'm also maybe hearing his respiratory sounds, um, things around me can be distracting. So like if you're really starting to learn this, like I would recommend maybe closing your eyes even and like bounce your head a little bit, nod your, nod your body because that is, that might help you stay on track because it's so easy to just let it slip away from you and then you panic and you don't remember what number you're on. So let's try two more times. So I'm gonna count for 30 seconds again and then we'll do one more time after that. Okay, begin. All right, so that time I got 52, so that's 104. So he was going a little bit faster that time. This time, let's do an irregular heartbeat. So I'm gonna have an irregular heartbeat play. That means we're gonna have to count for the full minute because it's not that consistent pattern. So we're gonna listen for a full minute and see if we can't keep up with it. And begin. I wonder how you felt about that. That can be really tricky to stay on track with those ones, especially because it's one minute feels like such a long time when you're actually tracking for one minute, right? Um, but that was also a little bit fast. I got 136, so I hope you got something similar. Thanks. I invite you to subscribe to our channel and share a link with your classmates and friends in nursing school. If you found value in this video, be sure to hit the like button and leave us a comment and let us know what you found particularly helpful.